Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in this series. Today, we're going to continue with the sword and we're going to be doing the, the retopology aspect of it. Now, I'm going to be showing you a very, very cool trick to save a lot of time and uh, make this thing work a little bit better. Now, one thing I'm noticing, though, is at this stones right here, at some point, it seems like I duplicated the pieces. See that? So that's a that's a big no-no. So we definitely need to go back to Dynamish. I do not want to freeze the subdivision levels. And see how we still get like the welded points there? So I'm going to say over here, weld points. That should weld all of the points together. And if it's not doing it, another thing we can do is just control shift like that and then go into delete hidden. Because I, I don't know, for some reason we had that. So again, uh, Dynamesh. Well, before we do that though, let's turn on polish. Let's delete hit the lower, delete the hidden geometry. Actually, that should be it. I think just deleting the hidden geometry should be, uh, should fix it. Uh, let's take a look without the polyframe. There we go. Yeah, that works. I don't particularly like this piece right here. It looks a little bit weird. So again, I'm just going to hide that one and delete hidden. Uh, same for this one. Like, I'm just going to delete that one. Uh, even if we get like that weird, like, serrated effect, I think it's fine. So yeah, there we go. Now uh, comes the part uh, where we're going to be doing, or we're going to be uh, cheating a little bit, if you wish. Because instead of doing manual retopology for, for this whole thing, we're actually going to be using Decimation Master, okay? Now, Decimation Master is a plugin inside of ZBrush, the full version of ZBrush, that allows us to reduce the amount of polygons that we have on our object and, and make it a lot easier to work with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to Subtool, and I'm going to say Merge, Merge Visible. And we're going to get this shape right here, which has all of the parts of our object, but they're merged, right? And I'm going to do something really fun here. I'm going to say C plugin, and first I'm going to go into Decimation Master, and I'm going to pre-process the sword, okay? So what pre-process will do is it will analyze all of the shapes of the sword. It will, like, know where things are higher in detail and where things are lower in detail. And that way, when we go C plugin again and decimate to a percentage of uh, polygons, it will try to reduce it to that percentage. Now, I've done some tests. It has crashed a couple of times while I was recording this. And we're going to go to 1% of decimation in my case. I'm just going to say decimate current. And as you can see, what we are going to have here is a very nice decimated sword. A little bit high in polygons. Not super high. As you can see, it's only like 15,000 triangles. Um, but this is what we're going to be using. This piece right here. As you can see, it works very, very nice. So I'm just going to export this as is. Let's go here to momentum. And we're going to call this sword underscore low. Now I'm going to hit control C to go back to the pre uh, like uh, decimation. I'm going to say C plugin and I'm going to decimate it to like about 20%. That's going to give me the high poly of the element, which is going to save me some uh, polygons, but it's not going to make it super heavy for any other softwares that we might be using. So I'm going to export this as well um, back here. And this is going to be our sword underscore high. Yes, let's replace that. Perfect. Now let's jump into Maya. You can do this in Blender as well, by the way. But we're going to do the UVs. And I'm going to show you a very quick way in which we can do UVs. And there's one more thing that we need to do before we bring this into substance and uh, start uh, texturing. So, yeah, very fun process. Now, again, one of the reasons, uh, and I do want to be very clear about this, this technique that I'm using for this sort only applies because we're, we're like, covering a couple of criteria. First, this object will not deform. You cannot do this decimation process with a character. The topology would look awful. Second, the shape or the like the material of the object like gravitates toward that. So if you're doing something that's going to be like a rock, a mountain, a column, things like that, you can use this technique and it's fine. Especially nowadays uh, with Unreal Engine 5, which by the way, we have a new course, check it out. Um, with Unreal Engine 5 where we can use Nanite, which is going to like just ignore the poly count entirely, we can get like super high resolution elements, triangular it and that's fine like it won't be a problem however if you're working for specific projects then yeah you might have to do manual retopology for the whole thing and it will definitely take a couple of hours so uh in our case we're not gonna do it uh right now so now i'm gonna go into the sword and i'm gonna bring in both the sword high and the sword low into into maya i'm gonna hide the sword with h the high sword let me turn on the the key shortcuts and this is my low sword. So probably one of the like biggest things everyone's going to be wondering is how the hell are we going to do UVs? Like we don't have any edge loop. It will be very difficult to just like go one by one. I know, I know, but I have a trick for you. We're going to go to the right view. We're going to select all of the back faces of the object like this, or as close as possible as we can get to the back faces. If you want to be, to be if you want to be a little bit cleaner, for instance, on this like stones and stuff, just select them. That's fine. Same for this one over here. Just 
deselect them just to get as close as possible to the to the edge. You're not gonna get the edge. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter for this particular piece, okay? Um, for instance, on this, like triangular shapes, I definitely do wanna like get rid of some of this. So see how we're we're trying to get again that the half uh, portion of the thing. Let's go up here and again, just delete or or get rid of some of the selection so that the seam is on the sides and it's a little bit easier to hide because we're gonna be do the, we're gonna be doing the hiding of the seam on the on the texturing uh, software. So there we go. Now see how uh, this guys don't like it's not working as nicely as, as we would like. That's fine. Uh, in this case, to save myself a little bit of, uh, of problems, I'm just gonna double click those elements so that we're not doing anything with them. Uh, same for this one. I think I think we can do those uh, as a separate piece in just a second. If you see like a couple of triangles that you can add or remove, you might want to do it just again, just to keep your shapes a little bit simpler or easier. It's not gonna be the end of the world if you miss a couple of them. Just just keep that in mind. We're gonna do a planar mapping from the x axis or the c axis. Sorry, hit apply. And as you can see, that just cuts it. It just cuts those pieces straight through the half point because we have half of the faces selected on one side and half of the pieces selected on the other side. Should do the same thing for the stones that are floating right there. Should do the same thing for, for this guys right here. Uh, now, yes, you could try selecting the edges, but since this is triangulated, it's not gonna really work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select these two guys. Let's isolate them. And that way, if we go to the right view, it should be a little bit easier to select half of it. That's a lot, a lot cleaner. I like that. So again, just apply. It's going to be a cut straight through the middle. A little bit of a cut going in there. That's fine. And then finally, this piece right here. So again, right view. We select half of it. And we say UV. And just a planar mapping on the C-axis. Perfect. So now, if we were to grab all of these pieces and go into UV, UV editor, we can just say Control U to unfold. And since everything's triangulated, there's no angles, there's no nothing, as long as the decimation was clean, the unfold should work. And then control L, and there we go. We have this. Uh, we're missing half of it though. Where's the other? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab all of this UV shells, which are all of those faces, because we don't have UVs on the other side. So I'm gonna select all of the other faces on this area right here. Let's let's close this. Well, let's uh yeah, I forgot to actually I messed it up. Let me let me let me redo it real quick. Also, see how there's like a floating face right there? Be very careful with those. Those are faces that you don't want to have. Happen sometimes with decimation. So let's go back again to the right. Let's do a first a planar mapping on everything, on the whole thing. So now all of the elements have that like cut that we were talking about. Now that we have that, now we can select half of the faces like that. And again, like for the triangles, I, I don't really like the cut that we're getting on the triangles. That's fine. Um, we can just remove them from the selection. Same for, for this thing and this thing. So we're only getting the, the bottom parts. And we're going to say UV planar mapping again. That gives us the, the cut on those areas. Now let's select this, guys. Let's isolate them. Let's go right view. And again, let's select half the faces. UV planar mapping. And there we go. So now we should have UVs on both sides of the sword. Grab everything, control U to unfold, control L to layout, and look at that. This is what you would expect from a, from a traditional like UV map, right? We have proper distribution of the, of the textures. There's a lot of wasted space, I'm not gonna lie. Um, if you wanna use all of that space, we might need to cut the UVs a little bit more. So for instance, the handle, we, we could add like a cut right there. And I mean, it's not that difficult to do, but adding cuts, uh, you know that adding cuts will also add uh, to the, um, what's the word? Um, it's going to make it a little bit dif more difficult to hide the cuts inside of the, uh, so of the software. But I'm going to show you how to do it because you guys know I really like you and I want to teach you as much as possible for from the 3D world. So let's move this thing right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this islands so that we like overlap them at a reasonable like place, like there. And then I'm just going to grab all of these faces right here. Let's go into face mode. All of those faces right there, that's gonna be like my my uh, crazy cut. And again, I'm just gonna say UV, planar mapping, and that's gonna cut a another section there, right? So grab everything again, control U, control U to unfold, and then control L to, oh wait, 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 my bad. Uh, we did a planar mapping, and the problem with doing a planar mapping on those things is that we <laughs> delete the, the previous cut that we have. 
So, so that's not what we want. Let's do it separately. Let's go face. What I mean by separately is I'm going to move these things to the side like this. There we go. So I'm going to grab some of the faces first. So faces. So some of those faces first and just those faces. I'm going to do the UV planar mapping. That's a cut. And then same thing over here. Same thing over here. Because if you do it at the same time, it's kind of like, like going across. And you, there you go. Try to match it as close as possible. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly perfectly symmetrical, but as close as possible. That's, at least it's on the on a, on a similar area. You can see it gets a little bit crazy there. Some of you bees, that's fine. I'll show you how to how to hide that stuff. This is not the cleanest way to do it. I must admit, this is not the cleanest, but it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna look good, I promise. So control L and there we go. So now since the pieces are smaller, the UV texture is um, smaller as well. And uh, we are not wasting as much space on the on the UV map. So our UVs are working nice. Uh, I think the base is gonna work great. So I'm gonna select this thing. I'm gonna say mesh display and soften everything, soften the edge. And this is our low poly, okay? This is gonna be the low poly for our, um, our piece. Now, there's a couple of things we need to do before we bring this into, um, into Substance Painter. I don't want these pieces to be contaminating each other. So each section that we sculpted in ZBrush will be its own element because I don't want the ambient occlusion from each element to contaminate other pieces of the elements. Because if we are going to move them and animate them in such a way that they have this sort of like cool effect, um, the ambient occlusion would remain as a, as a dark spot that I, I don't really want. So to avoid that, I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to say mesh separate. And now we have all of these pieces. This is also going to be super useful to detect where we have like a crazy little triangles floating around. So as you can see, if I select this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, that little stone, that guy, that guy, and those guys, that's all of the pieces, right? So if I move them around, you're going to see that, well, we have some weird stuff, all of these other guys. So I'm just going to shift and select everything else and delete them because those were crazy things that we don't need. They're like residues from the decimation master. Now, the trick here is you're going to rename each of these things to a name that's easy to remember. So this is going to be like handle underscore low. You need to add the underscore low. It has a namespace, hate namespaces. To remove a namespace, you're going to go windows, general editors, namespace editor, just select both of them and delete, merge, merge. There we go. So that's sword handle low. This is sword handle, I don't know, icon or sword icon low, sorry. There we go. This is sword uh, left spike underscore low. This is the same, but right. So just copy and paste the name. This is also going to be helpful for uh, the rigging portion because we're going to have the names already there. We're going to be doing rigging tomorrow. So um, if you want to spend your Sunday learning about rigging, uh, which is a fun, it's a fun uh, process, make sure to turn it to tomorrow. So that's blade low. And now all of this, I'm just going to go up here and again to, to be a little bit more efficient. There's this option called a rename. I'm going to call this sword stones underscore. It's going to be underscore one, two, three. And I'm just going to call them underscore one low, underscore two low, underscore three low, and underscore four low. There we go. Now, here's the important part. We're going to bring the high poly uh, out, and we also need to do the same process. So I'm going to hide this one for now. We still have the names. Grab this guy, and we're going to do mesh, separate, delay history. We're also going to get, oh, no, we didn't get as many, like, low elements. So just, like, that's the handle, okay? We'll just grab this and bring it there. Perfect. And then this one, that's the icon. So bring this and get it there. Perfect. Now that's the, or the next one, that's the right spike or the left spike. Bring this one, go there. That's, I would expect this one. That's the right spike. That's the blade. So it's pretty much the same. As you can see, it's pretty much the same. It seems like I animated this thing. Let's break the connection. And then that's stone one. Uh, that should be stone one. Actually, I'm not seeing anything. See, see how there's like nothing showing? So that's a problem. Make sure to delete it. Okay, that's stone one. Now here, I definitely want to bring these guys just to make sure that stone one is the same one. Okay, it is the same one. So this one 
is this one. This one should be this one. This one should be this one. And uh, this little one should be this one. There we go. Now, as some of you might be correctly guessing, the names are wrong here. I'm just going to grab everything. We're going to go into edit. Uh, there's one that's uh, search and replace names. I'm just going to look for underscore low and replace with underscore high. Work hard, work smart, not hard. There we go. So now all of the suffixes are properly named. I'm pretty sure the names are right. So this is going to be my sword underscore low uh, group. And this is going to be sword underscore group high. Whoop. There we go. Grab the group and everything inside of it, file and export this selection um, to our projects. Let's go next to live. I'm just going to bring this thing here so that we can access it real quick when we need to. So that's a momentum. And this is going to be momentum. I'm just going to call this momentum like that because this is going to be the main file that we're going to be using. And then all of this, guys, a G. To repeat the last action, I'm just going to call this momentum underscore high. Very important that you export this as an FBX, either from Maya or from Blender or from wherever you're doing this sort of thing. Export this as an FBX so that it remembers the grouping and the names. Super important. Don't forget about that one. Cool. So now we go into substance. And we're going to do a very basic substance painting like technique. As you can see, there's there's not a lot of stuff. The only thing that's like a little bit weird is the glowing uh, elements. So, so that's where we're going to be investing some of the of the elements. Give us one second for this to for this to finish. Um, and yeah, there we go. So here instead of substance, we're going to be using this. Which, by the way, we also released a a recently a new substance course, a, a complete guide to to substance painters. So if you're completely new to substance, you might want to check that out on the links down below. So let's go here, momentum, and we're going to grab our momentum mesh. Uh, 4K is not necessary. Uh, an object like this, usually 2K is more than enough. If we want, later on, we can export at 4K, but 2K should be more than enough. And we're going to bake first. So we're going to go to uh, texture set settings. Down here to the bake mesh maps, we're going to select a 2K, and we're going to select our momentum high. Now, here's the important part. First, anti-aliasing. I'm going to do a 2x2 two two sample so that we get like a nicer effect. It's going to take a little bit longer, but it's going to look nicer. And very important, the match by mesh name so that it only bakes the mesh that has the name to the other mesh. It's not going to contaminate any of the other meshes. And we need to change this in three places. Three places. The normal map right here, the ambient occlusion map, self-occlusion, only same mesh name, and the thickness map, self-occlusion, only same mesh name to make sure that it only bakes the information from each specific piece to each specific piece. We bake. There we go. Look at that beautiful ambient occlusion. As you can see, no contamination from one piece to the other. The curvature, wow, that's going to be beautiful for the effect that we're going to go for. That's the thickness. I don't think we're going to be using the thickness, but we can try something. And there we go. We have our game ready sword asset with all of the information that we have from ZBrush right here. You might find a couple of errors. For instance, uh, I remember seeing some of the things like right there, but it shouldn't be the end of the world. Oh, actually, we missed a piece right there. That's a no, no. We should patch that up. Maybe it was not merch or something. Uh, okay, let me show you how to fix that because that's a <laughs> that's definitely a problem. So I think easiest way to solve this is on the sword, the blade low. I'm just gonna grab that hole right there. Say fill hole, mesh, fill hole. And then select that face and say mesh triangulate. And now those faces, we also need to do a little bit of a, of a planar mapping because it doesn't have any UVs. So we're gonna do a planar mapping and we're gonna have to redo the UVs of course. So control U, control L, there we go. Where we need to grab all of the low UVs, control, oh, Control U, Control L. There we go. Nothing else should change because it's uh, it's the same name. Just make sure you say mesh. Uh, uh, I didn't. Uh, no, sorry, mesh display. Soften edge. Make sure there's no other like holes or anything. Okay, fine. So grab everything again. File, export selection, export this as momentum. Yes. And here we need to refresh it. So we're gonna go into edit, project configuration. We're gonna reload the sort. I should patch it up. 
Of course, the fakes are not going to be working anymore, so we need to do them again. Shouldn't take that long. And now we shouldn't have the hole. So make sure, of course, to always check your, your geometry to make sure everything is working as intended. Cool. So I'm going to try to keep this simple with the textures so that if you guys are following along, you can do it as well. Of course, I could go to Substance Source and look for some like nicer stones. But we have some concrete here that should work. So for instance, we have this concrete dusty, which I really like because it has, of course, this sort of like stone technique. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is the seam lines. The seam lines suck, right? We don't want the seam lines. So how do we get rid of them? You're going to change the projection to tri triplanar projection. And that's going to be pretty much like doing a photograph on all of the sides of the element. And it's going to be projecting the texture along the, the elements. So in that way, even if we had seams, they're now pretty much gone. Uh, the scale definitely needs to be a little bit bigger. So the grain of the, of the sand should be a little bit bigger. That looks pretty, pretty damn close. Now, let me bring this thing to the side here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the hue. I'm going to try to match the hue. It's definitely darker. Like it's a dark stone. It's a little bit more saturation. It's like a brownish saturation. Or, 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 here's another thing. This is a white element, right? So why not just add a field layer, change everything so that it's only the color, and then sample the color that we need, which is the sort of like dark color, dark red color. There we go. And then use something like an overlay to overlay on top, right? So this is like Photoshop. You can combine layers and, and move them around. So that overlay is really, really looking nice. That's the, that's the color on the, on the reference. Uh, so that's what we're going to be going for. Now we need to add the uh, metal edgeware, right? So for the metal edgeware, I am going to be using this concrete clean. Again, let's change this to triplanar projection. And let's change the scale a little bit more so it's bigger. This one does have a color, so I should be able to sample the sort of like beige color that we have right here. Right click, add a black mask, right click, add a generator, and we're going to add, of course, our metal edgeware, which is going to affect pretty much everything. And you guys already know what I'm about to do here, right? So first of all, let me reduce the amount. I don't want as much uh, metal edgeware. I think something like this is a little bit better. And now uh, I am going to add a field layer. And we're going to add, of course, uh, either a clouds or like any any sort of things that you want, any sort of like noise generator. I like the clouds three. I'm going to increase the contrast on this thing, play around with the balance, and we're going to multiply this against the metal edgeware so that we do have a metal edgeware, but not everywhere, right? Like we want this thing to, to kind of like fade in certain areas, and that's going to make it look a lot more interesting because otherwise it just looks like noise pretty much everywhere. I like to change this to linear dodge, and I, of course, like to bring this thing down. So it's not as intense and it's not like on your face. Now, there were certain areas like this area down here that had like a harsher effect. So on top of this things, I'm going to add a paint layer and using my brushes, I'm going to look for like a hard brush. Like this charcoal, I think it's going to look good. That's a little bit too squarish. Um, let's see. This one, this like dirt splash. Yeah. And now by pressing X, I can switch between like a black and, and white effect. And I can kind of like play around with this sort of thing, right? Give it like this sort of like impact look. So I can see that one has a little bit of it. The pommel has a little bit of, a bit of it. Um, it also seems to be light. Like uh, I, I can see a little bit of light uh, being painted on the on the element, but I think it's a good idea to to use a little bit of logic and say, hey, well, if these things are chipping away from the element, then yeah, we might see a little bit of uh, you know this white thing on on some of these areas, for instance, right? So kind of like uh, like adding a little bit of an edge, and you can spend a, as much time as you want on this particular area. You guys know that. For these demos, I try to be a little bit fast so that um, so that we can cover a lot of information. Um, but normally, if we were working on this for like a project, you would have, I wouldn't say all the time in the world, but <laughs> way, way more time than what I have right now. So let's add just a little bit there on the on the tip. There we go. So yeah, as so you can see, this this looks quite nice. Now, of course, of course, of course, of course, one of the like selling points of this thing is the glowy effect, right? Like the glow lines that we have uh, everywhere. So I'm going to show you a couple of tricks here. Uh, first, we need to add an emissive layer. So we're going to go here to channels and we're going to add an, an emissive channel. 
And on the layers, I'm going to add a new field layer that's going to be white and it's going to be uh, emissive. Now, the emissive color is going to be blue. So I'm going to bring this all the way up. And uh, why am I? Well, actually, I'm going to paint this uh, blue as well, like blue and blue. So I'm going to say black mask, oh, add a black mask. And now with a soft brush, soft like squiggly brush like this one right here, I'm going to start painting the runes. Now to save myself a little bit of work, I'm going to turn this thing on. I'm going to switch this mirror to C symmetry. So technically, if I paint like this room right here, I should be painting on the back side as well. There we go. So I'm going to do a trick here. And uh, this has to do a little bit with uh, with how light works in the real world. When something is glowing, it's because it's emitting heat. Okay. And the the hotter it, uh, it glows, the the whiter it gets, right? So so if you have like complete white that's like as hot as something's gonna it's gonna burn and you have seen this like uh think about like a like an iron being heated on the on the forge it starts red like dark red and then red and then orange and then it goes all the way to white right so technically it, it goes all the way to blue like if you see blue glow that should be like the highest glow in the universe i learned this from neil degrace tyson he was doing an, an interview with someone he was explaining that so so when you see something glowing blue, that's like way, 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 way hot, like super, super, super hot. So um, here, what I want to create is I want to create this effect where, where the outer edges of the element are glowing blue and the inner edges are glowing uh, uh, white, right? So, so the core of the, of the object is like even, even like a uh, wider. Let's make this a little bit smaller. There we go. And now, as you can see here on the concept, where this thing's shipped, it's it's also like revealing the energy, uh, which is important. So what I'm going to do to save myself a little bit of, uh, again, of hassle, is I'm just going to paint everything. Okay, so so that area is kind of like showing the, like the inner energy of the, of the sword. You might be wondering, well, well, we're painting the, the stones. Isn't that bad? Yes, of course it's bad. But I'm going to show you one way to quickly mask them out. I'm going to leave some of this, like, as a stone. Because otherwise it's going to glow kind of weirdly. So only where, where I'm seeing the stones, am I, am I going to... Am I gonna do this? I'm gonna double click again to bring the the original one back because I think I, I lost a little bit of the like fussiness. And then just there. Cool. Now I'm gonna switch to field mode and I'm gonna fill this with black and I'm just gonna select a geometry. And I'm just gonna select the stones. So that way I'm masking out the stones and uh, and now we're gonna have this sort of effect. Okay. Now, very important, I would definitely need to jump onto F3 and just make sure that the inside of the of the seams is also painted because if the stones move, I don't want to have like a weird, like this one right here, right? So I don't want to have like a weird patch of stone not painted. So just make sure that the unions are there. So F1, double view, F2, 3D view, F3, uh, 2D view. So there we go. Now let's uh, isolate that one again. And again, if you want to paint out certain things, like if you say, yeah, you know what, it's, it's a little bit too much here, let's... Let's start like creating this or getting this thing a little bit closer to the border. Go for it. Cool. So that's the blue one, right? That's the blue, that's the blue channel. And I do want to soften it up a little bit. So I'm going to go right click here and I'm going to say add filter and we're going to add a, a blur filter. And we're going to expand this filter a little bit like this. So that is also going to give me the effect that this thing is glowing, right? Because usually when, when light glows, uh, it, it kind of like fades out a little bit. Now, this fading, we're also going to be getting uh, on the on the render itself, on, on the glow, but it helps. I, I believe this this definitely helps uh, sell the, the effect that we're going for. Now I'm going to create a new layer. This is going to be a white layer with a missive at white intensity. I'm going to say black mask. And now I'm only going to paint on the inside of the elements. So really, really smoothly here. I'm going to paint right here. Give me just one second. And now we're just going to, again, add this sort of line 
Let's go as close as possible to the center. It doesn't have to be perfect. And some of you might already be guessing what we're about to do. It's kind of like hand painting the glow, of course. There we go. So now, of course, we're going to use another filter and we're going to use our glow filter. Our glow filter, sorry. Our, uh, uh, not the glow, uh, the, the blur filter, the blur filter. There we go. And we're going to increase the blurriness. So it's going to add that sort of like white glow followed by a blue glow on the element. And it's going to add like depth to the whole thing, right? It's going to look like the core of the object is glowing hotter than the, than the outside of the object. Let's do that filter. We don't need it. And that's pretty much it. I do think I want to add like some more, like, I don't know. What else could we add? Because it's just a rock texture. There's not much we can add. Uh, sometimes I like to add just like general texture. So for instance, if I grab this concrete bear, it looks pretty cool because it has like spots to it. Uh, what I can do is I can just turn everything off except for the color and then just use the color as a, like a multiplier or something. See that? So now we're gonna get like a like an interesting effect, and we can of course like reduce that effect, uh, but at least it's gonna get add some like a visual interest to the to the whole thing. Now also remember this thing is gonna be like we're gonna be seeing at this distance, so don't worry too much about it. Maybe like push the colors up. It's definitely stylized, definitely definitely stylized. This one I think is a little bit too dark, so let me let me bring it that back a little bit more. And that's it. Our texture is now done. Now of course on the thumbnail you saw a cooler render. I took this into into Maya and, and probably added a, a render afterwards uh, just to make it look a lot better. But we're going to see this inside of uh, inside of Unreal very, very soon. So, yeah, that's it, guys. Uh, hopefully you guys have liked the, the project so far. It's been quite fun for me, for me honestly. Um, here we could also just start going to, like, specific, like, edges and adding some more damage just to some of them. That's also going to add more life to the whole thing. So, for instance, like... Maybe some of this stones. But that's that's more about like hand painting things. I, I definitely want the the tip to be like more damage. Okay, so so play around. Feel free to to move things around. Uh, as you can see it's symmetrical right now. That's fine. You can delete the symmetry if you want. Like the scratch right there. I would advise against adding a, a name occlusion layer, which is something that we commonly do, because it would darken the whole thing a lot more, I would say. So so be careful there. Don't don't go too much, like too low. And that's it. So on the next video, we're gonna be talking about how to export this into Unreal and how to give it to our character. I'm also gonna be animating this, so it's it's gonna be like we're gonna have like a slight idle animation that the character is like this one's always gonna be idling. So yeah. That's it, guys. Hang on tight. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, help us, help us grow the channel. Um, we've been having some very good results in the last couple of weeks. So if you guys help us with the shares, with the likes, and with the subscribes, that's going to be amazing. Thank you very much, guys. I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.